Earlier this week, Missouri GOP Senator Roy Blunt announced he would not seek re-election in 2022. Now, another top Republican says he won't be running to replace him. On Wednesday, Secretary of State Jay Ashcroft said in a statement, quote, after intense prayerful consideration, we have decided to remain devoted to the work Missouri voters have to entrusted me as Secretary of State. Jason Rosenbaum joins me now. He's a politics correspondent for St. Louis Public Radio. Welcome, Jason. Thank you so much uh, for being with us. So Secretary Ashcroft had been eyed as a potential top candidate for Senator Blunt's seat. Why is that? There's two reasons. One is the obvious one. He's the son of former U.S. Attorney General and U.S. Senator and Missouri Governor John Ashcroft. But in his own right, he's won two statewide elections by overwhelming margins. He even got more votes last year than president, former President Donald Trump. But the, the truth of the matter is that when you have a father that served as both U.S. Senator and Governor, you have firsthand experience about which job is better. And it's been widely viewed that John Ashcroft liked being governor more than U.S. Senator, especially because he's the only Republican in Missouri state history to win two consecutive terms. So I'm not really surprised that Jay Ashcroft passed on this race. I think he's a top tier contender for governor in 2024. But it's made this uh, wild, suddenly wild U.S. Senate race a lot more uncertain at the moment. Yeah, in fact, you report that Senator Blunt's exit is setting off a quote-unquote melee on the Republican side. So who has expressed interest in running for the seat, and who else might jump in now? Well, pretty much every Republican in Missouri has expressed interest. There's a running joke <laughs> now that everyone is, like, praying about it and talking it over with their family, including people that, you know, aren't even <laughs> old enough to run for Senate. Uh, but the top contenders so far, especially with Ashcroft out of the race, is uh, Attorney General Eric Schmidt, who I think is very close to confirming that he will run for Blunt's soon-to-be open seat, as well as Lieutenant Governor Mike Kehoe and former Governor Eric Greitens. One of the big uncertainties at this point is whether a member of Congress that represents Missouri on the Republican side will jump in. The most serious possibilities at this point are Representatives Jason Smith of Salem, Ann Wagner of Baldwin, and Billy Long of Springfield especially with uh, Long and Smith. Both of them are very close to former President Donald Trump. And if they got in the race, it's very possible that they could get Trump's endorsement and outflank some of the statewide candidates that have a leg up on uh, running statewide before. Interesting. Uh, you know, Mr. Trump won Missouri in 2020 by uh, about 15 percentage points. And I imagine um, a potential endorsement from him would absolutely, I would think, sort of lock in any candidate's um, chance at, at it. I, I, I imagine that there'll be a lot of people fighting hard for that, although it sounds to me like there are already some, some front runners for that. Absolutely. And one of the things that has come to light in the past few days is that both Blunt and U.S. Senator Josh Hawley have talked directly with Trump. And I don't know if they have a preference of who they want. I can definitely assume that there is one candidate they do not want, and that is former Governor Eric Greitens. It is not a secret that Josh Hawley and Eric Greitens hmm. do not like each other. Uh, they, in fact, I think hmm. despise other even before 2008 when Greitens <laughs> imploded in in spectacular fashion and it's interesting to why me is that, that why don't they get along well I mean it, I don't really think Greitens appreciated the fact that Josh Hawley called for his resignation in 2018 and oh, turned over it, probably <laughs> yeah and turned over information to the St. Louis Circuit Attorney so he could be charged with a crime. And it's it's kind of interesting that Greitens goes on a lot of these conservative shows and the conservative guests ask him about how he's going to compare himself to Holly without really knowing that background. It's not really that big of a secret that they don't like each other. And I wouldn't be surprised if hmm. Holly is working behind the scenes to make sure Greitens is not the candidate. Interesting. All right. Well, what about Democrats? Realistically, do they even have a chance? Well, I mean, De Missouri had a Democratic senator in, in 2018 with Claire McCaskill, so you can never say never. Uh, but I, I, I talked about this a little bit on Twitter today. I think the idea that Missouri is a swing state now, uh, like the Lincoln Project has said, 
is is laughable. It's not a swing state from a presidential standpoint anymore because Democrats have been unable to win any statewide races in the past cycle, few cycles, because they can't win in rural Missouri and they can't even win in some conservative suburbs. So in order for a Democrat to have a chance, they need to do four things. They have to outraise the Republican candidate, whoever that is. They have to convince Democratic groups that supply money for third party ads to get behind their campaign. They have to help other Senate campaigns uh, and, and races become uncompetitive. And they have to piece together a rural, urban, suburban coalition like both McCaskill and former Governor Jay Nixon have. And um, I just think that even even someone with promise is going to have trouble doing all four. And if you can't do all four, you can't really win in Missouri. Hmm. All right. Well, finally, uh, Republican lawmakers in Missouri have introduced several bills to change state election laws, and some have drawn strong opposition from voting rights advocates. Do any seem likely to pass, and what measures are you keeping your eye on? There's a couple of things I'm keeping an eye on. Uh, there has been actually an effort among some Republicans to do away with Missouri's excuse-based absentee ballot system. Missouri has is one of the few states that doesn't have no excuse absentee. But the problem is, for a lot of Democrats, it's paired with a lot of things that they don't like, like bolstering the state's uh, photo identification requirement to vote. The other thing I'm paying attention to is a ballot item that would actually make it harder to amend the Missouri Constitution. A lot of Republicans have been upset for years that left of center groups have gone around the conservative legislature to pass things like Medicaid expansion and overhaul of redistricting. But that could actually run into bipartisan opposition because a lot of conservative groups use the initiative petition process. I'm not sure how these things are going to end up, but they're definitely worth keeping an eye, eye out for, especially the, the first uh, proposal I talked about. All right, Jason Rosenbaum. Jason, we'll be watching that uh, melee, as you called it, on the Republican side here. Thanks so much, Jason. Really appreciate it. Thank you.